Christ! Shoot over the suspect's body in the direction you'd have fired if you'd have actually managed to get here in time. Jesus. We're in this together. Best way. You shot that fellow in cold blood while your wee mate stood by and watched. What was that? Interview's finished, Danny. I'm not good. Neither way. You know why I've been appointed? To ensure that anti-corruption inquiries don't get pulled apart in court. Don't try playing the big man. We both know you're not up to it. She definitely does. You need me to make the hard choices for you. Because I see what's inside you. Jelly. Putting Kay into an AFO role is a whole level of jeopardy above a normal undercover. I can assignment. handle it. That the file on the suspect shot by Waldron? Yeah. We need an unredacted file. Leave it to me. You didn't know the suspect? <sighs> no. Ronan Murphy. The suspect's name. Don't remember me. <laughs> the only thing with Ronan, it was over too fast. If there's something bigger here, Danny, you don't want to be the one left carrying the can. You better come up here, Skipper. On my way. Shot fired! Shot fired! What's he saying? What's he saying? Stay with me, Danny! 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 Let me in. Weak pulse, right courted. Let's get such an arm secure the way. What the hell happened in there? Still in shock of. I just need a couple of minutes to get my head around it. Still making sense of it, Gov. Get them to the station. You too, Francis. Maintaining pressure on left submandibular GSW. Anna. Is he talking? Is he talking? I need to talk to him. The incident took place inside the bedroom, so it's off limits except to preserve life. Single GSW to the neck, sinus rhythm, but BP's in his boots. Sat's dropping. It's gonna make it. Johnny, send me up for a crash tube. Stand by, everyone. You need to fill in your pocketbooks, then there'll be a debrief. When you do anything, you'll be walked through it all by legal. Any news on Danny, yeah? Sinus radio. Yeah. He's gone, he's just gone. Let's get him in. OK, we're losing him. I've got ace display on the monitor and no output. Fluid's wide open. Off and back in. Star CPR. Adrenaline, one milligram. Four cycles of CPR given. We've had no output with chest compression. No corrosion pulse. Ace display on the monitor. Pronounced life extinct, 0834. Thanks, everybody. Sorry about that. We need to leave everything as is for the coroner. Disconnect monitoring, oxygen, fluids, and leave the cameras in the place. Don't touch anything else in case of contact.
So is anyone going to tell me what actually happened? Jesus Christ, Kate. There was a struggle. Who with? We were all involved. Daddy had his firearm out and it just went off. I didn't hear a struggle. You were downstairs, Jesus! And from downstairs, I didn't hear a struggle. By the time I got upstairs, not one of you was given Danny first aid. What did Danny say to you? He whispered something to you. What did he say? I'm not sure what he meant. No, no. What, what did he... What did he actually say? Well, just cos you didn't hear a struggle doesn't mean there wasn't one. Why didn't one of you help Danny? He was lying on the floor. He'd been shot and there was blood everywhere. We were in shot? Well, you couldn't lift a finger? Couldn't call for help? Well, do we have to talk about this right now? All I can see in my head is Danny just lying there, bleeding out, man. What was your RT about? What RT? You radioed Danny telling him to come up. Did I? Yeah. He sent back, come up here, Skipper. I'd have to hear the recording. Well, you were back to back on too, so there is no recording. Can you just stop? Do me head in. You know, if I'm going to go along with this, I need to know what I'm covering for. Fine. The ballistics will say what really happened in that bedroom. Yeah, you'd think. Time, Gaffer. I said they had plenty. <clears throat> Casey Francis. Sir. Right, let's get straight down to brass tacks. How did Sergeant Daniel Waldron meet his death? He died in the ambulance, sir. You know exactly what I mean. Danny Waldron shot himself, sir. Danny put the gun to his own head. We were trying to help him. Uh, but we, we couldn't get the gun off him and the firearm discharged. By the time I entered the room, Danny was already bleeding profusely. Did you administer first aid? Kate, um, Victor Charlie 5-5, five five, uh, she ran in and she tried to control the bleeding until the paramedics arrived. So you didn't administer first aid? Well, you hope you know what to do in them situations till it comes to it. Uh-huh. Image 297, a ballistic simulation of the bullet's trajectory. It appears the fatal shot was fired in a position close to Sergeant Walton's chest and aimed upwards. That how it happened, Constable? Yes, sir. Now, forensics detected firearms residue on your hands, Victor Charlie 54, and the hands of your mates, Victor Charlie 52 and 53. So that would all seem to fit. Well, case closed. We can all knock off early. There is an alternative explanation as to why you had your hands on that gun. Well, as I said, sir, we were trying to get it off him. You weren't trying to force that firearm under Waldron's chin? That's a horrible accusation. We tried to save Danny. Who grabbed the gun first? How he did, sir, sorry. Victor Charlie 5-4. I didn't even know that Danny had drawn his gun. And the next minute, Harry's wrestling him for the gun and he's shouting, Danny, no, and he's calling for me and Rod to help him. The three of us ended up fighting over the gun. We, we did everything we could to try and stop him, we just couldn't. He didn't make any kind of statement. He tried to say something. What did he say? I couldn't make it out, sir. Now, Daniel Walden, as you know, was involved in a shooting of a suspect during Operation Damson. You and Victor Charlie 52 and 53 were on his team and witnessed what really happened. Was Danny coercing you into corroborating his version of events? No. The tape, I'm referring to a transcript of an interview with you on May 21st. D.I. Cotton and I repeatedly asked you if there were inaccuracies in your account of Sergeant Waldron's shooting of Ronan Murphy, to which you replied, I can't do this. I'm sorry. I can't do this. No way am I testifying against Danny Waldron. No. I was about. Danny Waldron scared you into covering for him, and then the three of you clubbed together, and then you put an end to it. No, no. That's just not what happened. Will you please stop? This is really upsetting. If Danny was threatening me, I would have reported him without doubt. All I had to do was report him. He can be a difficult bastard, yeah, but on an op, you've got your skipper's back. We, we were trying to save him, not hurt him. Danny Waldron killed himself, sir. That's the honest truth. Why, though? 
given back his firearms license. He was operational again. As far as Wardrum was concerned, the case against him was closed. Who knows what was going on in his head? I was downstairs at the Abbots Lane address and didn't witness the incident at the upstairs bedroom. Authorised firearms officer, Victor Charlie 5-2, Victor Charlie 5-3, Victor Charlie 5-4. In my view, you fail to give a plausible account of the events leading up to the death of Sergeant Daniel Waldron, and therefore I am arresting you on suspicion of his murder. Now, you don't have to say anything. However, it may harm your defence if you fail to mention something under questioning that you later go on to rely on in court. And, of course, anything you do say may be taken down in evidence. Well, I'm after a cell for a copper somewhere where no one knows her. I need to arrange custody for a police officer at a station where he's a known. Now. I wonder if on reflection you'd consider that perhaps you should have run it by me first. Four coppers went into a room, only three came out alive. That's what I considered. They've experienced a tragic and shocking event. They've admitted that they were too traumatised to even remember first aid. Their police federation reps and their legal advisers are arguing that perhaps they were sent back to work too soon after the Damson shooting. Their inspectors getting it in the neck for not disbanding the squad. And frankly, I think they've all got a point. But it was you who vetoed their suspensions. I mean, they're only back at work because of you. What steps have you taken to evaluate Danny Waldron's mental state? Oh, come on, you don't honestly believe he killed himself. He had a history of professional discord, no stable relationship. He certainly had risk factors. And he did it just like that, in front of his whole squad, in the middle of an op. We're speculating. What we know for sure is that if you can't successfully charge them in the next 36 hours, it will be a hugely embarrassing climb down. My sincere advice is to take a more circumspect approach, rescind the arrests in favour of revoking their firearms permits and confining them to desk duties while inquiries continue. What? And that isn't a climb down. Forget it. Oh, scrap that. Let's not fall out, Ted. I'm here to help. I should also emphasize the importance of confidentiality. We already have a legal suppression order in place to restrict press coverage. The PCC and the Chief Constable are in complete agreement on this. In the absence of hard facts around Danny Waldron's death, we don't want wild speculation to affect public confidence. I mean, if you and the PCC and the Chief Constable are all in agreement, who am I to argue? Let there be no misunderstanding. I do not care what the lawyer says. We are going to investigate that mob. So. Sir, I don't think we should close the investigation into Danny Waters' background. Harry Baines was right. Danny had his demons. And I'd like to keep digging. Thank you, sir. Check upstairs. Our police! Our police! Anything about Danny Waldron having a dog? He didn't. AC12. Sorry, who's that? PC Mini Bindra. I've been posted. What's the honor? Try and track the owner of a missing dog. I'll try the number on his collar, but it's out of service. Well, if you would give me the number, Sarge, I'll uh, try and get you a lead. Zero double seven double zero nine. Double zero three eight one. Just get it done. I 
out of reference, SJP2, Daniel Walker's handset. I've got a firearm in here, no one enter. We need someone firearms trained to make safe. Jones is downstairs. Yes, Sees the laptop and the phone. Won't have any more info on Danny Waldron's data files till the morning. Right. Grab a seat. Cheers. Okay. Legal firearm. No information on its origin. Plus the case and its contents. Storage receipt. Trying to trace. Photo. Looking into this and all. And this. What was in it? Nothing. Well, an envelope with nothing inside. Oh, well, that's what the report says. So, look, we need to have a quick operational briefing. Right, you're following leads on Danny Waldron, which means I'm after Baines, Britford and Kennedy. That sound about right to you? Yeah. Good. Well, as Kate's undercover's on my side of the line, is there any problems if I look after liaison? Um... <clears throat> well, I, I thought you'd be happy, you know? Avoid skulking about in dark alleys. Yes. Yeah, now, Kate and I have worked together for three years now. Yeah, and you've got a partnership. Yeah, exactly. Look, I get it. But like I said, it's on my side of the investigation. Right. All right. This will warm your cockles. Tom, Steve never bought refreshments. Look, there's not really much to report. It's early days. It's just Gaffer's got me on the trail of the three wise monkeys. Right, well, now all three of them are speaking no evil. Oh, well, it's up to you to change all that, isn't it? No pressure. No pressure. What did Waldron say? When? Yeah, his dying words. Word? He started to say, listen, and that was all he could get out. Why? Just curious, sir. I noticed your reaction to me in the interview. Did I say something that didn't hit the right note? Just. You're a brilliant liar, so kind of unsettled me. Well, thanks for the drink. Thanks, Helen. Night, Doc. Night. Sarge, sorry to bother you, but that out-of-service number relates to a discontinued account. The dog owner must not have updated the information on the collar. It's a Linus Murphy. Lives locally. Did you say Murphy? Yes, Sarge. Right. Uh, text me the address and organise some more backup. Will do, Sarge. Work. It's all right. Love you. Love you too. Anyone home? Found your dog. Check up, Seth.
Don. I'm coming. Call for forensic deployment. Keep checking for other casualties. Sir? All right. There's evidence of prolonged torture. Cause of death isn't clear. Oh, well, cutting his head off can't have helped. Or well, lack of blood from the neck means. Joke. I'm a bloody detective inspector. I can't tell he was decapitated post-mortem. I can't have been to conceal his ID. I mean, the premises are full of evidence confirming who he is. Going through the findings in Danny Waldron's flat, the receipt relates to a storage company. Danny left something for us to find. I'm liaising with the company to find out which of their facilities the receipt originates from. Good. Danny Waldron's telecommunications history is very quiet in the days leading up to his death. There's only one contact that stands out. A call from a mobile lasting only two seconds, and then a text message from this same mobile number. Your ID on the contact? The mobile service provider has disclosed the registered user. I'm just cross-checking with the DVLA to see if the driving licence photo card matches the selfie. Oh, well done, well done. The hard drive of Danny Waldron's work computer hasn't revealed anything suspicious as yet. The same goes for the domestic laptop we seized, and I'm still trying to trace this photo. Good work. Let me know when you've got the info in the storage facility. having all this extra energy to work off. Is that supposed to be funny? Look, I've swerved desk duties, but AC12 are going to keep after all of you, me included. We can't run away from them. Really? Is that why they've had to back off arresting us? That's because they haven't got enough evidence yet. That'll change when they know about Harry's radio call. Yeah? Well, the only way they know about that is if you tell them. Or oh, Harry does. He seems pretty nervous to me. We went into the room. There was no one there. We had to get a steer on whether to look for firearms or to call him for a search team. Didn't sound like that to me. Harry said better come up here like there was trouble. That put Danny on edge, so he drew his fire on. OK, so? So, someone was entrapping Danny. You know something, Kate? You don't know a thing. Yes, Anna. I spoke on the phone. I've got this receipt here. Must have made it right with. Yeah. So? Yeah. Looks like this is Linus Murphy's missing head, although we're just waiting on full forensics. And the post-mortem? The report came through earlier. Multiple serious cut and gouging wounds to the chest, abdomen, genitals and anus. A cause of death was internal hemorrhaging due to a pelvic fracture. No prints of fibres were found on the implements or the body or at the premises. Therefore, it's still not possible to pin the murder on Daniel Waldron. However, the photograph shows Danny Waldron as a teenager, and facial recognition software gives a 99.5% likelihood this man's a young Ronan Murphy, the suspect shot by Danny Waldron during Operation Damson. 
Well, they knew each other. And this person bears a strong resemblance to Linus Murphy's severed head. Danny knew him too. Well, what the hell are they both doing in a photograph with Waldron? I'll update you when I've got more facts, sir. Now, there's nothing inside the envelope. But I believe that's because Danny Waldron met his death prematurely. I mean, all these mementos would seem to be clues to his activities. And I reckon at some point he intended to include something more in the envelope. Well, that makes sense. Yes? The ID checks out on Danny Waldron's last contact, Rachel O'Connor. Thanks for me. Good work, Steve. Carry on. Yeah. Nice one. What is or was your relationship with Sergeant Danny Waldron? We met on a night out. He was with a bunch of his police mates. Analysis of Danny's phone records reveals a call from your mobile phone to his, lasting a couple of seconds. That was the night we met. I was giving you my phone number. I'm sorry to pry, but it may help our investigation to know the extent of your relationship. We had a couple of drinks, and he walked me home. He didn't come inside. Thank you. You sent him a text message? A couple of days later. I hadn't heard from him. When did you see him again? I didn't. Did he seem troubled to you or concerned about something in particular? No. We were having a good time. I was disappointed. He never got back to me. Why? He seemed very lonely. I thought he needed to make a connection. Seems like I was wrong. You're not wrong. How is he? Is he okay? Very sorry, miss. A few days ago, Danny Waldron was killed in the line of duty. Like, I just wanted to say, uh, I'm lucky to have you. See you when I get home. Steve. It's really no point you being here. No. My lady. The prosecution applies for public interest immunity in order that Detective Sergeant Arnott be exempted from testifying in respect of this matter. <laughs> Disclosures of covert tactics in open court will undermine current and future police operations. Detective Sergeant Arnott conducted an undercover investigation that was and is of the utmost sensitivity. Some of this evidence was the subject of the defendant's successful appeal to be retried for her original convictions. The application is refused. Sorry. You tried. You're going to have to face her again. Stand away from the door. Jacks. Yeah, you're right, Gough. Are you feeling okay? Yeah. It's just been a rough couple of weeks, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> 
Detective Sergeant Arnott, please would you tell the court how you came to be involved in the investigation surrounding the defendant? I was and still am a serving detective in AC-12. On September 5th, 2013, there was an attempt on the life of a protected witness, John Thomas Hunter. A police convoy was ambushed, causing the deaths of three police officers. AC-12 was assigned to investigate the possibility of police complicity in the conspiracy to assassinate Hunter. And our inquiries focused on the officer who led the convoy and was the sole survivor. And this officer was the defendant? Yes, former Detective Inspector Lindsay Denton. Thank you. <coughs> Detective Sergeant Arnott, did you give evidence at the defendant's original trial? Yes, I did. Was there any significant evidence discovered at the defendant's home? A hidden sum of cash was found. Found where exactly? In some items belonging to the defendant's late mother. Specifically, the overnight case. How did that make its way to the defendant's bedroom? I carried it up for her. Why? I was carrying out an undercover operation to investigate the defendant. And who authorised this undercover operation? My commanding officer, Superintendent Hastings. When? The operation was authorised retroactively. After you carried the case belonging to the defendant's late mother up to the bedroom, what did you do? I offered my sympathies and I turned the conversation towards the events surrounding the conspiracy to murder Tommy Hunter. Did you ever spend a night at the defendant's house? No, I did not. Part of a night? Yes. Until what time? Three, four in the morning. If you're unsure of the exact time, Detective Sergeant, you may refer to your pocketbook. You did record in your pocketbook every time you stayed with the defendant? No, I was undercover. If she sneaked to look at it, she would have found out what I was up to. What were you doing with the defendant until three or four in the morning? Talking. My undercover operation was designed to win the defendant's trust. You were endeavouring to create a close personal relationship with the defendant? No, only to create the appearance of a close relationship. I was working. Are there any specific operational rules associated with an undercover operation with respect to the closeness of such a relationship? Yes. Would a, a sexual relationship be acceptable during an undercover operation? Under current guidelines, no. Was that the reason you didn't seek authorization for your undercover operation? My lady, we've already established that the operation was authorized retrospectively. Move on, Miss Hepburn. How many times were you alone with the defendant in her home? About a dozen. At this time, was the case against the defendant going well? It was work in progress. But you needed a key piece of evidence to crack the case. My job is to find any and all evidence. Would you please remind the court? Who found the cash? A forensic search team. Led by whom? Me. No further questions. Is it true? What? Don't. No. I didn't have sex with her. Oh? But nothing. Nothing? No. Right. We've both had relationships. You just as much as me, and I don't dredge up your boyfriend. <sighs> None of them were suspects. It was before we met. You're protesting a lot for someone who didn't shag her. Because I did stuff back then. I'm different now. I only want to be with you. <sighs> we good? Yeah. I can guarantee you 110% that none of my people would plant evidence. They know I would throw the book at them. Followed by the book shelf. I know you would, Ted. Maybe this will cheer you up. Peace offering. An unredacted file on Ronald Murphy, the suspect shot dead by Danny Waldron. I have been shifting heaven and earth. No, you don't have to. Well, thank you, Jill. 
Thank you very, very much. Ted, people are going for AC-12. I'm just trying to make sure they get as little ammunition as possible. Well, I appreciate your efforts, of course. I've got a table boat to cross town. Your friend's cancelled on me if you want to take the edge off. Uh, no, I think I better go home to the wife. And... OK. Oh, but thanks for the file. and Jackie are leading you up the garden path. Nobody's doing nothing. This was a new posting for me. Look what I've walked into. It's doing my head in, mate. How do you think I'm feeling? It must be ten times worse for you. You'd think better of Jackie, wouldn't you? The little locks. The waterworks. If I can see there's something going on between you two, I can't be the only one. You know, you just put in two and two together and you come up with 400. First one to come clean to AC-12. They always get off the lightest. If it isn't going to be you, then maybe it'll be me. What did he say before he died? I don't know. I couldn't work it out. Bollocks. Let's just say I know what's going on. This won't just be your career up the spout. This will be a long stint inside. Plenty of time to wonder if covering for Harry and Jackie was your smartest move. And prison's such a lovely place for a copper. Peace, will you? This is getting out of hand. We need to talk. Yeah? Yeah. Not not here, alright. I'll uh, I'll figure out a place in the time. Yeah? All the forensics in on Linus Murphy. And? The head's been formally identified as Linus Murphy's based on DNA and dental records and matched to the body found at Linus Murphy's address. Forensic examination of the head has also provided the missing link to Danny Waldron. Cells in the mouth that match Waldron's DNA. Cells? Semen cells. Well, now we know why you wanted to chop her head off. Well, you did right to question Waldron's private life. Mind you, never had the man pegged as a homosexual. Not sure that's necessarily true, sir. The unredacted file in Ronan Murphy. Thank you, sir. I haven't read anything in it that changes my understanding of anything. But take it away from you, you might find something. On you go. Sir. Gaffer finally got us to file on Ronan Murphy. Dead end.
Hey, buddy. How's it going then? You all right? I don't know about you, but I ain't slept in God knows how long. Yeah, I know. Just trying not to show it to the missus. It's horrible, isn't it? But it's the only way of getting through to the other side. Other side? Well, AC-12, dropping the investigation. Going back to work and that. Like nothing ever happened, eh? Well, no, I didn't mean it like that, did I? Look, um, I've been talking to my, uh, to my rep and, and the legal advisor. I, I haven't, I haven't told them anything. I need this job. I need my pension. People are putting two and two together. Wait, what are you on about? What people? You no, know, Danny managed to say something. Kate knows what happened. Yeah, but how can she, though? I don't know. I don't know. But if anyone's in the frame, it's me. Listen, mate, look, it's like I said... You know, if Kate it's knows about time. me and, and Jackie and Danny, I've got to come clean to AC-12. The longer I leave it, the worse it looks. Mate, I've got a little one and another one on the way. It wasn't my idea to lie through our teeth. Yeah, but we had to lie, though, didn't we? Because the truth makes us sound guilty, and we're not guilty, are we? It was us or him, wasn't it? It wasn't us. It was you! Look where it's got us. A career up the spout. A stint inside. It's a great place for a copper. Lindsay Denton. I do solemnly, sincerely and truly declare and affirm that the evidence I shall give will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Miss Denton, last year you were convicted in this court because 10 out of 12 jurors were sure you'd conspired in the murder of a protected witness, John Thomas Hunter. Would you tell this jury whether you were guilty of that crime? No. I had nothing to do with the murder of Tommy Hunter. Now, we've heard from Detective Sergeant Arnott that one important item of evidence against you was a sum of approximately £50,000 in cash found at your home. To the best of your knowledge, how was that evidence found? I have full knowledge of how it was found as I was present at the time. Detective Constable Kate Fleming led me upstairs where a team of forensic scene investigators led by Detective Sergeant Arnott were in the process of searching my bedroom. Detective Sergeant Arnott remarked upon the fact I'd shown a peculiar interest in my mum's personal belongings. Peculiar? In what way? Detective Sergeant Arnott remarked that I'd been particularly anxious about mum's things not being returned to me. Were you? I was devastated by her death. The thought of them being lost was heartbreaking. I kept them in that room and I didn't even touch them. I didn't even try to move them. I just... As long as they were there, somehow it felt to me that my mum was there. Are you okay to carry on, Miss Denton? Yes. You were recalling that Detective Sergeant Arnott was leading a forensic search? He asked one of the forensic search team to open mum's overnight case. And what was found in the case? A large number of banknotes. Had you ever seen these banknotes before? Never. How did you react? I was astonished, devastated, confused. And how did Detective Sergeant Arnott react? He didn't bat an eye. Well, he didn't seem surprised? 
Or curious? Or triumphant? No. How would you describe your relationship with Detective Sergeant Arnott up until that point? I thought we'd become friends. You became close? Yeah. An undercover officer is forbidden from sexual relations with a person that they are investigating. Yeah, my lady, the investigating officer's relationship with the defendant has no bearing on the abundant and powerful evidence against her. My lady, an undercover officer must abide by a code of conduct. Failure to follow that code of conduct implies that there are other rules he might be prepared to break. I'll allow the question. While undercover and investigating you, did Steve Arnott engage in sexual relations with you? Yes. On how many occasions? Once. I was very vulnerable. Following my mum's death, and, uh, he seemed like the only person in the world who understood you know, what, what I was going through. So I... And as a police officer, what conclusion did you draw from that regarding Steve Arnott's relationship with you? That as sexual relations are forbidden, he couldn't be undercover or investigating me anymore. Uh, how many times was Steve Arnott in your house? It's a dozen. But you were always there at the same time, weren't you? Uh, I, w I wasn't sleeping very well at night. Sometimes I'd doze off on the sofa and wake up and a couple of hours would have gone by. Oh, he'd been there the whole time? <coughs> yeah. But you had no idea where in the house he'd been or what he'd been doing? No. With access to your late mother's belongings? Thank you, Ms. Denton. My lady. Yes, let's leave it there for today. All right. Arnott. Shut the door. Remain standing. Did you have sexual relations with the suspect you were investigating whilst undercover? Lindsay Denton's going to say anything to con the jury. Did you or didn't you? No, sir. I did not. If that's your answer. It is my answer, sir. She claims that when the money was found, you didn't bat an eye. Is that correct? Yes. Why would that be now? The search team had established a find prior to Denton entering the premises. I ordered them to simulate making the find in front of her, to see her reaction. You make the find, you show her. There's your reaction there. You were showboating. Yes, sir. I'll give you yes, sir. The defense are using this to discredit your work and the work of this department. Your team was bossing the game. You went and gave away a penalty. Get the hell out of here. Superintendent Hastings.
in charge here. I want a preview of the Forensic. It is with deep regret that I inform you all of the death of PC Rod Kennedy. Rod's body was found hanged at an industrial unit. Early indications are that he took his own life. There'll be a book of condolence in the squad room, and we'll send out the necessary information for those of you who want to send flowers and cards. Anything I can do. You'll be fine. Yeah. Did you have any idea we'd do something like that? Did you? the same thing. Okay, I read your report. You had nothing on Rod Kennedy. The last thing that Danny said to me before he died was, listen, and that was all he could get out. You want to know how bad he fought for the bluff? That's why I'm asking if you're okay. Just doing my job, mate. serving side by side, that is a serious lack of professionalism, Constable. Yes, sir. We had to keep the relationship hidden or we'd have both been disciplined. And were you still involved with Rod Kennedy at the time of his death? No. We'd broken up a couple of months before. Why? Something happened between me and Danny. What happened between you and Danny? It was a one-night thing. Rod found out about it. Him and Danny had a bus stop, but Danny was... <sighs> Danny was in the habit of making remarks. Undermining Rod. Rod was really jealous, he couldn't handle it. Why did Danny Warden draw his fire on? I don't know. I mean, we didn't do anything, and there was nothing to suggest he was in any kind of danger. I can only imagine he was spooked by something. Go on. And that's when Rod went for him. Rod grabbed Danny's gun and the two of them started wrestling with it. And me and Victor Charlie 5-3, we tried to get it off them both. And that's when it went off. So let's be perfectly clear, Constable. You are now declaring that PC Rod Kennedy killed Sergeant Daniel Waldron. Yes, sir. Rod killed Danny. Rod killed Danny. trick in the book. 
blame the dead bloke. No, he killed himself, though. Fits with him being the guilty party. First of all, three of them sticking together, now there's two. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Catching criminals is tough enough, but catching coppers, God give me strength. We keep going, fellas. We keep going. Sir. Sir. mistake, man. One mistake and you keep making me pay. OC-12 went for it. Yeah. I don't be modest. I heard you play them like violins. I had no prior information of the operation. No prior information of the operation to move Tommy Hunter. No prior information. No prior... No prior knowledge. I had no prior knowledge. I had no prior knowledge of the operation to move Tommy Hunter. Every day I wish it had been somebody else who'd taken that call. Somebody else who had to stand by and watch as their fellow officers Gun down and set alight. <laughs> I had no prior knowledge of the operation. No prior knowledge at all. 